Welcome back. Well, some describe it as Seinfeldian, as to say a budget about nothing. Others say it was a true blue conservative document which perfectly sets up the surpluses to come. Either way, it wasn't a riveting budget, and that's why the fallout was all about Jim Flaherty's curious flip-flop on a key promise to take effect in 2015, income splitting for all. And you know, to discuss this and other issues in the fudget budget, facts and fun-filled <laughs> figures, we have the esteemed chair of the prestigious esteemed. finance committee, conservative MP James Rajat, the far too nice for politics deputy leader of the NDP, Megan Leslie, and finally <laughs> hugely popular force of personality, Roger Kuzner of the Liberals. Oh, Welcome he gets a to point. you. He gets the point. I get the... You got prestigious and esteemed, and you got yeah, too nice. Yeah, what yeah, the heck? Yeah. I'm going to ask fantastic. you guys a question. You got. You've got Jim Flaherty off script with Stephen Harper, and yet you sort of do a feeble opening question on the House of Commons, and then you let it go. Like, shouldn't you guys be exploiting this? This is a key promise, and the NDP oh, and just sort of went, eh. Well, on income splitting, uh, you know, fair enough, but I will say there are a lot of things to be raising in the House of Commons, and I think there is the budget, there is the issue of income splitting. You know, what's going on with uh, the Conservatives and their ranks, having the, the Finance Minister offside from the Prime Minister... I mean, I, 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 sat there through most of the yeah, question period, didn't even answer a question on his own well, budget. Well, he didn't sit there. He tried to get up, at, but the Did Prime, get up? Yeah, but the prime Minister stood and, and took, his, uh, <laughs> took his questions for him. Thank you very much. <laughs> but there's a lot to be asking about. I think the Fair Elections Act, yes, there's a budget out, but it's kind of a do-nothing budget that doesn't say very much. I think we still need to be asking questions about the Fair Election Act. This is huge. It has huge implications. So it's hard to get all those questions in the first tranche, but we tried. Well, you're, you took till John McCann. Callum stood up and really hammered uh, the Prime Minister. John, John had a great question on it today. And I, the Flaherty it, it, ducked. It, it was funny. He didn't dodge it. He, he didn't even milli vanilli it. He didn't even mouth <laughs> the words to income splitting. For I, I mean, uh, obviously there's something going on in the uh, Conservative caucus now, and there's uh, concern about it. When you look uh, the, the, the uh, C.D. Howe, their, their report was very powerful. When it, you look at a, a tax measure that only benefits 85% of Canadian households, and, and, and fairly significantly, uh, I would think that the, uh, the the government is going to be forced to uh, rethink this. And you know, whether or not it does have merit, let's let, let's see. You're rethinking it, James. But can we can we pause here? Can no. we actually no, no, can we actually get, can we actually talk about the fact that we haven't balanced the budget yet? So this is 2015, 2016. Well, you were the, promising the it three years ago, yeah, by the way. But the projection for next year is a three billion dollar deficit. Then the following year, a six billion dollar surplus. So we're moving towards that. And at that point, frankly, once you get to the six billion dollar surplus, as Minister Flaherty said this morning at the Ottawa Chamber of Commerce, was a certain portion will have to go to debt, a certain portion for tax reduction, and a certain portion for looking at priority areas of spending. So will there be a tax cut for families going forward? Absolutely. I mean, we're still committed to that and very much committed to that. And I do have to take exception. The Seinfeldian budget, there's an awful lot in this budget from investments <laughs> in research and excellence. The universities and colleges last night were the happiest people I saw in the stakeholder room because of the $1.5 billion fund over the next 10 years for research excellence, investments in the National Grant and Council. So these are fantastic things, opportunities for Canadians with challenges, which is actually what Minister Flaherty has worked very hard on. I'm not saying, James, that there's not positives in this, but, I, but to see the finance minister question the merits of a, of a promise made in the last campaign that was supposed to be the carrot rewarding us at the end of this arduous cutting process as our bonus, if you will, performance bonus, that's, that's kind of bizarre to see that happening now. That, but what's... Oh, sorry. If I might be able to jump in here, I know you guys are enjoying the conversation. <laughs> uh, but this is only one of the this is only one of the measures that they've promised forward as well. Don't, don't forget they they're going to double the uh, the tax savings, savings account. Yeah. No, but they're they're going to uh, double the um, activity <laughs> the activity oh, the fitness the, 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 yeah the yeah. fitness thing, which did nothing to enhance or up numbers for participation. You look at participation rates between 2000 and 2010. And the only year that they really increased, 2007 when they brought this measure in, there was no increase in participation in this country. 2003 there was because our women won a gold medal in Salt Lake City the year before and created a new group of heroes. 
the, the tax measures aren't making any sense, but they've already committed to doubling that once they balance the but, books. But Roger, the fact families, the families I talk to are my age with kids just absolutely love these tax credits that are geared towards greater participation. Is that going to motivate are. me? My, they you know, are. I've got three well, grown boys, and Lynn absolutely. and I sat down and we made yes. our decision. We, we, we got them involved in sport. We got them involved in... Well, you know, whatever else they got involved in, but because of the merits of being involved in those types of things, that hey, listen, I get 75 bucks back at the end of the year. So that's not what. So just to be clear, if you're elected government in 2015, you're going to do away with all of these credits for families. I think Is we should true? do a real assessment and see, you know, all these little boutique taxes so that you're you going to do away with. Them? Well, I, I don't know no, if we'll if be able like to get them, into them. You don't like them, so you're going to. I even used it as a matter of fact. Okay. You know, so <laughs> it, it's nice to use. You can't criticize it, them and then say you're going to leave them in but place. But you're, right? giving, you're giving up $3 billion in, uh, in uh, national okay. revenue so for it. So the Liberals will get rid of all of these tax credits. Okay. <laughs> I just, Peggy, I you think you want to jump in between we these? Wouldn't these two? We wouldn't have wasted a trash talk to each other. We wouldn't have wasted a billion on the G7. What James said was he talked about how their government wants to get rid of the deficit and then actually balance target, uh, sorry, balance the budget, sorry, I apologize, um, and then actually target where their money's going to go and uh, set their priorities. Well, then let's look at what their priority is with the message, the message that they're sending with income splitting. They're saying their priority is just a handful of really rich people. James keeps going back to helping Canadian families and, and tax breaks for Canadian families. This isn't for Canadian families. This is for a handful of rich people. This is not actually going to benefit Canadians. We haven't actually seen the proposal, the black and white, something we can hold in our hands, but it, it doesn't make sense at this point. Add to it the fact that there's internal dissent among ministers about whether or not this is a good piece to move forward on. I, I think they need to rethink this. But the proposal is to benefit Canadian families, is to benefit families, especially where you have a disparity of income, one person earning a lot not, more than the other. It's not a lot it's, of people. So, Your own finance minister has admitted and, that. And no, and the, but the 50, it would be up to 50,000 in the last, that was what was uh, promised in the last election platform. So, but again, I would return to, let's Personally. actually get to a balanced budget position, uh, because things like tax-free savings account, uh, income swing, these measures will have to be decided based upon the fiscal realities of the day. We're not going to have a $6 billion surplus and then spend it all on tax cuts and well, uh, new spending. The, surely the Finance Committee must have consider like income splitting as a as a reward for a deficit elimination. Did they look at that before they made the promise in 2011? The Finance Committee did, but this was a Conservative Party promise. But yeah, the Finance Committee considers and all measures. the same thing? But frankly, uh, we have not promised that because we're still focused on balancing the budget. So we still talk about things that can be done within the current budgetary framework. One thing that struck me, and I want you to deal with this after as well, is that the surplus next year looks like it's largely built on a surplus of EI premium collections, which would be balancing the budget on the tax of people being overcharged for employment insurance premiums. What's that say to you, Roger? Uh, and a couple other things too, the, the sale of assets at yard sale prices and uh, pushing off the, uh, the, the acquisition of uh, military equipment, which, but he said he's not cutting it, he's just pushing it off. So I don't know if the banker, if I phoned the banker and said, you know, I'd like to push off my mortgage and car payment, insurance payment, I don't know how cool he'd be with that. Uh, you know, it's it's seen that the EI uh, premiums uh, will f the, the the EI account is going to find balance this year, so you would think that uh, they would be able to adjust to accommodate that. It, it, we we continue to say that it's a tax on uh, yeah. on the job creators on small businesses. Do you think they should yeah. cut the EI premiums or use the surplus for other things? I think I think that they need to not use the surplus to support. Uh, their election campaign, which is basically what this budget is, saying, hey, look at these shiny things that we're going to give you on the backs of uh, workers who have actually put in money into this account. The devil is in the details here, right? You can say, oh, we're getting back to balance. How are we getting there? If you look at another in, in my own portfolio, in the environment portfolio, uh, almost $400 million is slated for uh, parks maintenance. But when you get into the details, how much is going to be spent next year? One million dollars. <laughs> How much is going to be spent after the election? 390 million dollars. It's the, you have to actually look at the numbers and see how they're trying to make this work. Post last word, last all right. Yeah, hey, last word. All right. All right. Last word. Last word. But you have to look at the overall budget strategy 
you know, since 2009, two years of stimulus spending and then focusing on maintaining transfers to provinces for health care, education, social services, family benefits, elderly benefits, but restraining spending about 7% and that's $70 billion of federal discretionary spending. I mean, we're in terms of the G7, once we balance the budget, we're going to lead the world in this area. And frankly, it sends a huge message to the world in terms of Canada's fiscal, fiscal plan. As, which is why the credit, rate, the credit rating agencies have again reaffirmed our AAA credit rating. This is a good news story. This is a great news story. Investments in research and excellence, investments in your areas, I mean, to have a plan going forward is exactly what we should do. All right. We're and I'm getting time. a signal to wind it up. We're, we're, we're out of time. James, Megan, and Roger, thanks very much. See you next.